Mr. Maki is what you call in Japanese Toki no Hito, is a person in the middle of fairly large controversy about the new Olympic Stadium. And uh, there's a part of presentation that he had prepared for us, and uh, we are going to make it a Q&A format that I'm going to ask him about it. So, um, Shall we go on? Mm, I think yeah, so, perhaps. Please continue. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. And uh, it's been interesting to me because, as I said in my introduction, he's been sending me materials and writings, but he's been in opposition against this particular plan even before Tokyo was uh, designated as Olympic site. And he was going to publish his papers, but you withheld it until the decision final because if you thought that if it's not going to go ahead, it will not make any difference. But you were very well prepared when the plans came up and the Tokyo was designated. So perhaps you could update yeah, us. I, I can show you quickly the uh, chronological uh, uh, development and uh, the uh, result of international competition norms uh, November 2012. And uh, I uh, 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 wrote the uh, small essay in the Japanese uh, in August 15th, 2013. Then the Japanese are very quiet at the time, although uh, with uh, social media, uh, I could receive uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, reaction or responses uh, from uh, unknown people. And, uh, but uh, then the selection of Tokyo as 2020 Olympic was announced September 8th. Then now just images of a building uh, become a reality for uh, 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 people in Tokyo, in Japan, and so on. And when the cost estimate of the competition was announced. It was uh, three uh, point a billion yen, and uh, against one point three billion they have announced. So it's uh, quite a high. And the Japanese team with uh, Zaha's team went to a smaller project, but still uh, now today it is a very expensive one. Uh, the reason uh, why I wrote a letter was I designed Tokyo uh, Metropolitan Gymnasium or next to the site in the way back 1990. And uh, 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 this time uh, we uh, asked to not make the volume too high big and building too high. So we sunk uh, quite a bit of uh, part of uh, building underneath. And then I saw this one. <laughs> and you see, people could only see a bigness after the, big, the building was built. But it's, it's very difficult to, uh, do, uh, to imagine the, uh, uh, the uh, building on the drawing or in the model. But with these pictures, uh, it shows how large this one is in a very narrow sort of a site where we had an old Olympic stadium built in 1964. Uh, it's a big sort of a thing it's in a uh, mage shrine. It's an uh, uh, inner court is here, outer court uh, here. And this is one of the very nice sort of uh, view of Baroque style, the uh, cityscape. And then you see a like one. And so uh, I, the reason uh, why I wrote an uh, 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 essay was that perhaps uh, as an architect who knows a little bit better than others should be responsible to announce to point out this to uh, the public.
So now, as Olympic approaching, uh, we knew the re-estimate of this project does not come into 1.7 billion. Instead, almost near to uh, original 3 billion. And now uh, people, media, became very concerned with what we should do. Any you question? OK. Um, I have a question to uh, Mr. Maki, because if you look at the history of the Olympics in Tokyo, there was a plan before 1964, which Hideto uh, Kishida had been preparing, and then that did not go through, but he made an effort to protect this site. And instead of this site, I believe he moved the site to Komazawa. Yeah. So it's been a really long history of everybody, including architects and planners, and even politicians trying to protect the beauty of this site. And so my question is, why did they plan on this site, one? And then how did they come to plan such a big stadium? Uh, I think uh, the, uh, uh, you see, uh, in Japan, when there is a national uh, uh, problem or agenda, they often summon the uh, committee of advisors. Uh, and uh, they decided to have uh, this huge the, uh, uh, white airport. And uh, with the uh, retractive roof system here. But since this does not give uh, enough light to keep the uh, turf underneath, they had a very elaborate system, mechanical system, to uh, give uh, proper the uh, temperature and the moisture and the wind uh, uh, circulation. But it is a very, very expensive thing. And furthermore, uh, this the uh, roof, the tractive roof system is uh, huge and complicated under this particular system. And there is no uh, sort of a uh, solution yet found. And uh, that is also one of the big problems. And just uh, last year, uh, the Yokohama was visited by uh, Queen Elizabeth III. And uh, there's a big question of whether uh, the uh, ship could go under the uh, bridge or not. But fortunately, Queen, and Queen Elizabeth leaves after three or four days. Whereas this uh, big uh, uh, building would stay next five, 50 years, 100 years. And when you look at the uh, section uh, here, it's as big as typical Japanese the, uh, housing the unit. And then assembling those unit component, all in different sites because of uh, this shape. It's an enormous sort of a costly thing. Plus assembly in a small site to put together and lift it up requires time and so on. That's it. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. What's the current condition? Because you, I think there's two folded questions. One is, you think this is one of the reasons you got involved is it's one of the biggest, largest controversy in architecture you have seen in your lifetime. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. So somehow, uh, by not your choice, but you got involved because you felt it's necessary for you to speak. Uh, yes, uh, I have been. Uh, uh, involved in many ways in uh, holding a uh, symposium and uh, then uh, media people visiting the door of my house and so on. But uh, I think the, uh, uh, now uh, the people involved in uh, making uh, this building they began to realize that the opposition is very strong. And uh, uh, we'll see in the next a uh, couple of months would be a very, very important 
you know, for a public to know how they are going to act and so on, react. Right, so he's inadvertently became an activist. And also you made a statement that this is your last chance to the government. Sure. So what are the choices? Well, I hope uh, they uh, realize that they have uh, so much difficulty in uh, executing this uh, original scheme and uh, there must be uh, another way because uh, that had it uh, only responded to uh, this, this program. So I can't really, you know, uh, criticize her too much and yet the uh, shape of uh, this particular one is so expensive and uh, probably uh, there must be uh, uh, initiative taken by uh, the uh, government or ministry or uh, the uh, Japanese architects because uh, Zaha was only hired a design consultant and uh, uh, there is a Japanese team uh, which is responsible for uh, any problems uh, for uh, this project and uh, I hope uh, they are going to think because the time is running out and if they're going to have a new option, it must be executed sooner. That's it. Then now we go to Okra. Oh yes, I think <laughs> yes, I just want to ask you my favorite, my pet activist. I am also an inadvertent uh, preservation activist to try to save Hotel Okra. And I've been asking uh, Mr. Maki about the state of it because it's not, it's a very micro scale preservation issue, but it's kind of related to this large Olympic issue about entire attitude of in Japan about not really looking at its own tradition or culture in a way it considered it cultural asset or in case of Olympic Stadium, why can't they come up with the wisdom and uh, clever methods to build something which is most cost, more cost effective using a, a more technology, advanced technology in both issues, we think Japan and Tokyo is capable of preserving Okura, and then there should be an alternative way to build a more cost-effective and efficient stadium. But what's the status of Okura, as you know? <laughs> well, uh, they have a, a main building and annex, and uh, uh, the uh, new project is based on the assumption that uh, the annex uh, will be sold at a high price to somebody and then using uh, this uh, capital they are going to rebuild the uh, old one to be uh, much higher and bigger. And uh, the, the opposition uh, of uh, many people, particularly from uh, foreign account, be, uh, by the fact that the uh, central lobby uh, uh, is something uh, very memorable and wonderful for those people. And uh, it was designed by uh, uh, Taniguchi Yoshiro. And, uh, uh, but uh, he uh, passed away a long time ago. And now with this uh, strong criticism uh, uh, against uh, the demolition, that, uh, 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 okra people uh, would like to uh, try to save at least uh, this uh, central lobby, but not saving, but recreating in a new sort of building. Okay. And uh, Junior, Taniguchi Junior, you know the architect of MoMA, uh, is involved and uh, he might be assigned to recreate father's sort of uh, uh, places. Uh, uh, but uh, he's not responsible for uh, the uh, entire building. And, but he's a very capable and uh, wonderful architect. And I hope that uh, at least the image of uh, this central lobby will be uh, resolved in the sun. Okay, 